Hello guys, I'm your beta tester for the desktop filament extruder for the next videos. Werbewunde asked me two weeks ago if I could do the videos for him in English because he has always a lot to do and to make such a video is very time consuming. I tried to answer all the questions which we got on the trailer of the last video, like how much it does it cost, how you can make a career of it, how much filament you can produce per hour and how you can save up to 90% of your filament costs in future. So stay tuned and I try to answer all the questions which I have discussed before with Werbewunder. So maybe some of you will ask why I am the better tester. And one of the reasons is that I also have such a big apartment where I can put all the machines inside and all the stuff he has and all the 3D printers. And though I know what the need of the people is who want a small desktop filament extruder. But if I had these machines, I still didn't have the know-how to use them. So I can discuss with him how to make the filament extruder easy to rebuild for you guys and also as cheap as possible for you. So what you should remember always that what we build here is only one way to build it. There are several ways and there is no right way and no wrong way as long as you get the right result out of it. So in this case it means you can spend a lot more money and you can spend a lot less money for the same project. An example is the case of the filament extruder. You can make it with carbon outside, or you can make it with wood, or you can make it with metal. The price is totally different. And with the amount of parts we have inside the desktop filament extruder, also the difference of the lowest price and the highest can be totally different. It depends on the parts you will use by yourself. So we give you a recommendation but at the end you can decide what you want to use. So you don't have to buy the same motor we use. You don't have to order the same bearings or, or sensors or PID. Or you can use total different brand and because that nobody can tell you how much it will cost. But we can give a recommendation for the parts and that you can calculate before you start. So very important is that you see it as an investment means as more you print, as more money you will save over time. But there is another point why you should have a filament extruder like this. As more you print, as more fail prints you will have. And all the fail prints you can use again for your filament extruder to make filament out of it. And now I think you understand when you can buy your filament spool or you can use granulate which is much much cheaper and you can use all your wrong printed parts then you can save up to 90% of your printer costs and that means as early you start with your own filament extruder as more you will save in future for a longer time. I would say this question is answered and let's go to the first part we will build today. We will build the winder and that is the easiest part and we thought because we have a lot of beginners here, maybe they have no skill, no, no handcraft learned, but we believe in people that they can learn everything they want and it's a do-it-yourself project. So we start small and end big. So the winder is needed if you want to have the filament on spool. So now let's go to the parcel I got from Webwunder and let's look what it's in and what it's for. So, and to save a little bit of time, uh, Webwunder was so kind and sent me a parcel with the printed parts and all I need for the winder inside this parcel. And also I think he said he will put in the pull unit. So in this video, because I don't know how long it will become, we use the uh, parts for the winder to explain as good as can every part and what it is used for and um, how it will look at the end. So here we have the main part of the winder. It's um, PA12 filament. It's extremely hard and here you can see the bearing is already inside but you have to do it by yourself after you have printed your SDL or by a surface print surface. We will put some links in the description below where you can let it print because not everybody can print PA12 but you can also use ABS or PLA but PLA has some limitations means strong PLA which is very hard. For example Green Tech has a good PLA and then we have some middle part here that is a slider uh, in a nice orange which is also PA12 
uh, which would fit very well to my Creality CR10. And it looks very nice, in my opinion. So, as next, we have a part that is for the sensor. And also a nice orange. So, that is a part for the pull unit. And I would say we go for yeah, the motor. In this case, it's a stepper motor. And it has NEMA regulations. Then we have the electronic cable, which is for the sensor, what we have the printed part for. And that is the sensor. Uh, we'll explain it later, or we will look how we will build it together. Then we have some screws, which you can see here. Then we have here linear rail, 8mm diameter, and another one, it's the same size. And now we have a screw nut, M10, that will fit into the orange slider part. Then we have linear bearings for the M8. Linear rails, and that it was. That are only parts for the pull unit that we will build together in one of the next videos. I don't know when, but that's all for now. And now let's start to build it together. So, what you can see here is a 3D model rendered and how it looks with bolts and motor and so on when it's finished. So as every time we start with an empty frame, means that it's a printed file you get from us, and you can let it print by a print service or print by yourself. So PA12 is very hard to print, and not many printers can print it without modification, often used in automobile industry or somewhere else where uh, good quality is needed and where it has to be strong. So PA12 would be the best. ABS is also possible, but even better than this ABS is PLA from GreenTech. So, and now we come to the first step that you have to put the bearing into the frame. And the best way to do it is to heat it up before you put it in with a gas burner or a lighter. So it fits perfectly inside and can't go out without any forces. Here are some good tools you can use to get the bearings into the frame. I for myself used yesterday a mobile rice bench that helped me a lot in my small kitchen to bring everything together. That costs not a lot and it is very useful. Now we need two pieces of linear rails, 8mm, and they go from the beginning where the motor starts to the end of the frame and how long it is in detail you can see in the description. Now let's see how we cut it. But instead of an angel grinder, you can also saw the linear bars with a hand saw, with a metal blade and a vise, or a mobile grinder, but the best is still an angel grinder. The next important step to get the linear rails better inside of the frame is to bevel them. And for that you can also use 240 grit sandpaper. Mm -hmm. 
Now we can put the rails into the frame, but before we have to heat up the rails a little bit like the bearing before. Now we come to the point where we have to put the bearings into the slider and the nut. To do this I used my bench wise because otherwise it wasn't possible by hand. It fits so perfectly that you really use a lot of force. Now we come to the stage where we put the slider into the rails and the rails into the frame. The best way is to heat up the rails again before you put the rails into the frame. Here I used my vise. It helped me a lot because you need a lot of power again. The method to use a hammer to bring the rails into the frame we can only recommend if you use PA12. If you have ABS or PLA then be careful or better use a vise. By the way this frame of the PA12 has 16% infill only. So PA12 is way way stronger than ABS or PLA. After you brought it in we recommend to use a little bit machine oil for the rails. Now we come to a part which isn't so easy to rebuild. Normally you make it with a turning lathe, but you can also ask a metal working company or a friend. And we work at the moment on a solution that we maybe can rebuild it for you and deliver it to you. But first we have to see if there is interest in that we make it. So as more comments we get from you on the video, then we will find a solution for you and will offer it in one of the next videos where you can buy it or where you can order it. So as beta tester it was also my job to find out if it possible to rebuild it by myself without machines and I found three companies who offered me that they will do it for, for little money. So here you see more pictures of how it's made and what are the details and if you have a chance rebuild it. Otherwise as said we try to find a way for you and now let's look how it's made by himself. This end comes into the bearing and it has to be 8mm because the inner size of the bearing is 8mm. After it he cuts the end of the threaded rod so far that he can put the end into the bearing and that it fits together. So for example if the bearing is 7mm wide then make the rod 6mm otherwise it will touch the frame and will not rotate. Now he makes the other side of the rod where we will put the motor later inside and fix it with an M3 screw.
The hole for the other end of the rod has to have the dimensions of the motor axis. Means in my case, the motor axis has a length of 15 mm and a diameter of 5 mm. As next you have to drill a 2.4 mm hole, which will become the 3 mm thread for the screw, and then it's ready. Okay guys, this video becomes unexpected long and we are around 70 minutes now. I hope it's okay that I answer all the other questions like investment, how to calculate it, how to make yourself a business out of it and so on. And the other videos that we still have to do means the cooling part, the extruder by themselves, the pull unit and so on. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumb up. It would help a lot. Write a comment. What questions do you have? How do you like it? Or what we can improve in the next video? And please don't forget to share it in all the forums, Facebook and so on. What do you know? Because that would help a lot to make the project, which is very expensive, worse. And don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise, you will miss the next video. 